Oh, YouTube thumbnails, how I loathe your chunky text and neon colors, your wacky photos and unrealistic scenarios, your odd and quirky sense of humor, and of course, your overly emotional sensibilities. In this section, we're going to create three awesome YouTube thumbnails together, and we're going to practice being able to create something that's really compelling and clickable. So what makes a YouTube thumbnail clickable? And that's really the main premise and goal of a thumbnail is to entice people and tell people the story of the video or give them a great idea of what's inside the video so that they click and they're not disappointed. So YouTube thumbnails are not very big. The original size is 1280 by 720, but when they're displayed in the YouTube feed, they're much smaller than that size. So you gotta be able to be able to look at your design at this size and be happy with it. You can read any text that's on there. You can really understand the concept of what the video is about, and it communicates all of that in this very, very tiny thumbnail image. So in this case, uh, this is actually one of my design lessons that I have on my YouTube channel, but you can see how I have the product and I have a nice, clear, high contrast lettering. I can read this very well. We're gonna move on and show you some other examples. This is another one by Dansky, which is another great graphic design instructor. And this is one for Puppet Warp, and he has kind of this two-tone di division where he kind of shows his whole concept of what's a video about. It's high impact. There's people in it. We always connect with people better than objects. And nice, clear typography. I can read it. There's an icon that tells me it's a Photoshop tutorial, and, and it's very clear. The next one uses iconography and very simple solid boxes to communicate a nice, clean, clear thumbnail. So this works really well for illustrating some kind of vector line art in this case, the little video in the background. And then you have the kind of the cyan blue bar that runs across with nice, clear, high contrast white typography. And you notice all the typography, you don't see a lot of thin weighted typography. You see a lot of bold type because think of how small this is. This is a very small image and you got to be able to read it from a distance because not everybody reads your title. Sometimes they look at the thumbnail first. This is another one of mine. I've kind of used the diagonal line to kind of divide the image up a little bit. So you kind of have this green and then you have a white background. So they really pair well together and nice clear typography. I'm not trying to put the whole headline on my YouTube thumbnail. You just can't do that. You put a very abbreviated, shorter version of your video title on the cover. And also if you're using any software, put the software logo on there so people know right away what you're using. And this is for if you're doing client work, if you're doing thumbnail work for a client who maybe might be a YouTube personality or someone who produces a lot of videos, you're going to need to create these, create these images very fast and very quickly because sometimes they need one every single day. So the example we're going to do in the class, we're going to try to do it in under 20 minutes. I'm going to try to do it in under 20 minutes to practice trying to do a thumbnail as quick as possible, but also making a nice high impact one as well. Okay, here's an example of one I did a while back, just kind of showing a product design that I show how to do in the video on YouTube. And I tried to use kind of this fading into black so that the type can really be readable. And to be honest, I can even remove the smaller type on the thumbnail if it's going to be viewed very small. So a lot of people, when they design YouTube thumbnails, they look at it at this size. But when you design, sometimes it's actually kind of nice to zoom out a little bit so you can kind of get that final perspective of what that size is really going to be. So I like to zoom out a lot and get that perspective and get an idea of how small this thumbnail really is going to be shown on the YouTube platform. Here's another example of the diagonal action going on. It's not just kind of a, a, a straight down division. It's got it's this diagonal line that cuts it all the way down. It kind of brings both sides together and high impact, high contrast type on a white background and of course kind of a duotone purple image on the top. And here's another one just making sure if you're using any software that logo is nice and big so people understand right away what the video and concept is about. I use this background image. It's not overtaking the type. It's just a background image, but it helps communicate what the video is about. And before we hop into Adobe Photoshop to create these three YouTube thumbnails, I have a couple of downloadable resources that are going to be really helpful throughout this section. So if you access those, we have a few different files. 
We have an image file that we're going to use for the very first thumbnail. We also have this prompts PDF, which contains over six different YouTube thumbnail project prompts. The first three we're going to work together in the class. And there's also access to a template that you could just double click and you have it sized and everything is ready to go. But we're also going to be creating that together as well. So you can understand sizing and uh, how to export your document at the end as well. So let's get started with the first prompt. This is going to be a ultimate seltzer taste test. So like a soda taste test type of video. It's going to be a product review video and I'm going to read the description. This video will feature 30 different Seltza soda brands and an ultimate showdown for taste and overall flavor. Your goal is to create an eye-catching thumbnail that can grab viewers, but also communicate the video's main premise. You can choose to focus and use the supply graphic or use your own. So in this case, we have a Seltzer taste test. We want to really have this main focal point, this main uh, communicate what's in the video, which is all about tasting seltzers. So let's do some seltzer cans. And what I did is I created this graphic in Adobe Dimensions for you so you don't have to sit there and worry about trying to find seltzer, seltzer can pictures. Plus you have all the rights to use this however you want in your portfolio. So I wanted to supply a graphic that you can use. So I created this in Adobe Dimensions, which is a really neat uh, 3D kind of mock-up program. And I even walked through the basics of it later on in the course too, which is cool and the Design Trends 2021 Lessons. So I'm going to open up, I have a PNG, which is just going to be a transparent background, but I also have a Photoshop file that you can also open. Either one is fine. Let's open up the Photoshop file. So here it is. We have this background color that we can change to any color we would like, but we don't really need that right now. We're, we just really need this layer, which is going to contain the soda cans. So let's open up a new document and create a YouTube thumbnail size. So I have this template and a YouTube thumbnail size is 1280 by 720 pixels. So let's go ahead and open up a new file, file new. So 1280 by 720. Resolution is not going to matter too much when you have pixels, because that means pixels are going to be pixels. You have 1280 pixels in width and 720 in height. And the resolution doesn't really matter all that much until you get to printed documents. Now, when you have print documents, 300 is the goal to go for for all print documents. But when you have pixels, it doesn't matter because the size is the pixels. It doesn't change. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it at 300. And when we export this as a JPEG, you can also scale it up to make it high resolution if you want to make it larger too. So I would just stick with 300 resolution, 1280 by 720, and we're just going to do horizontal orientation. Always be an RGB color if we're doing anything for digital, and just click on Create. And that's pretty much it. I can go to View, make sure my rulers are on, and I could create guides. So if I want to click and scroll down, kind of build some margins out. So if I don't want uh, certain text or vital elements to go outside of a certain margin, it kind of helps me uh, keep the design clean and gives me a helpful guide. So I just click and drag and you can create some margins for yourself. And you have these rulers so you can see up here like how many pixels. So that's 100 pixels right here. This is really guides. There is no rule on YouTube about margins and, and all that stuff like there is on social media platforms. And another thing you could do is you can make it an artboard. So right now this is just a regular canvas. It is not an artboard. So what you could do if you wanted to just make it an artboard when you open up the new document, you can go to File, New, and there's this little thing you can tick right here. It says Artboards, and it's going to create an artboard. And what's different is an artboard allows you to resize it dynamically, but it allows you to create multiple different areas that you can export as separate elements. So let me go ahead and demonstrate. So I have this, I don't have this as an artboard right now, but there is an artboard tool. If I click and hold right here on the move tool, go right down to the artboard tool and I have that selected. And with that selected, I can go ahead and click and drag and just make this an artboard. So you can always resize your artboard in your properties, or you can resize it right up here. And what's great about artboards is let's say I'm doing a series of YouTube video thumbnails. I can create three others. Just do the addition sign, create another one, and then create another one. And so now I have three of them. And when I go to File and Export As, 
uh, and do some JPEGs, I can save all three artboards and three different JPEGs all at the same time. What we had to do years ago is we had to have a separate document for each YouTube thumbnail. So let's say we had 30 different YouTube thumbnails. We need to have 30 different Photoshop documents saved. And I had to open up each one to change them and then save them. And that took a lot of time. So a few years ago, they added artboards to Photoshop and it has been wonderful. And I have a lot less Photoshop files around. And let's say you want to edit one particular artboard size. You just have to click right here on the name. And if you ever have used Adobe XD before, it's, it's very similar. So I'm going to click right here on the artboard name. And I can go up here and change the size if I wanted to make it uh, taller than the others. For whatever reason, I can. And you can also click and hold and drag this around so you could kind of arrange these however you want to organize. And if I'm done with the artboard, I just have to press the delete button and it's gone. You will also notice in your layers panel that each artboard has its own kind of file system or layer system. So you have artboard three here and then artboard one here and they all function almost like a different document but it's in a different subfolder. So let's say I'm drawing on this one. Let's say I just draw a square. Let's say I draw a few shapes here. If I scroll down, you'll see these two rectangle shapes right here in artboard three. And then if I'm on artboard one, I can create something. So it's kind of their way of handling almost different documents in a way in the same document. So let's go back to our template that's already kind of made for us. I already put some margins on here. You can toggle this off and on. You could toggle the text off. We don't really um, need the text, so I'm going to keep that toggled off. And right now I don't need the margins. I will toggle those on when I start bringing in some typography and finalizing everything. So I'm going to toggle that off here. So let's begin. We have the seltzer thumbnail and we want to really focus on what is the main subject matter of the video. And that's going to be the seltzer cans, the multiple cans that they're going to taste. So let's bring in that PNG. So I'm just going to copy this and you can even just make this a new thumbnail and drag it in. I like dragging things in, but you could just uh, copy this layer, selecting the layer this is the long way to do it. Um, edit, copy, and then go down here and edit paste or you can just drag it right in. It's good to say the target document has a different depth than the source document. This may result in a lower than expected quality. Are you sure? Go ahead and just click yes, that is fine. That has to deal with how I rendered it in Adobe Dimensions. Don't worry about that right now. Bring it in. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and make sure it is a smart object. So converting to smart object and let's scale this down and find the right position. So we have this thumbnail and we can either feature it on the left or the right. So most people uh, read from left to right, not all countries, but most countries read from left to right. So the most important thing you want to have on the left and the supporting image you want to have on the right. That's not an official rule, just something just to kind of keep in mind. And I figured we have these cans, but they just have question marks on them. They're not actually different seltzer brands. So the only way to know if it's a seltzer taste test is in the typography. So let's go ahead and have that on the left and then have the supporting image on the right. So let's bring the typography in. So if we go back to our prompt, we can go ahead and type in the full video name. And this is already in all caps because that's how I had it on the PDF document. We'll go ahead and keep it all caps for right now. So let's find a way to break this down further. We don't have to include all of the words in this headline. That is not a requirement, but it's so short that I think we will be able to do it. And I think the most important words in here are seltzer taste test. That describes the video pretty much. And the ultimate is a supportive phrase. So let's break this up. So we have seltzer taste test on its own line. So we can just copy, go ahead and hold down option drag and then paste. So we have the ultimate and then seltzer taste test can be much bigger. We'll continue to just break this down into different lines. 